Hey guys, I'm Robin. We're at the we're on campus here at, at UTA, and uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a computer science engineering student here. I work with Leonard and Sally in the recruiting department, and I uh, I'm also getting ready to graduate. I'm really excited. Um, one of the bigger reasons that I chose UTA is because it's a smaller campus. Um, the class sizes are smaller, and uh, I've gotten to know a lot of people here. Uh, small campus doesn't necessarily mean little amounts of people. Um, I, when I'm done with my degree, I want to be a network administrator and uh, as my step towards that, currently I am interning at a Bot Aircraft Industries in Grand Prairie. Um, that's a little bit about me, but right now we're going to go around campus and we're going to go talk to some of the professors and see some of the big projects that are going on and uh, we're going to go hear a little bit about them and you can get involved in these starting the summer before uh, your first semester here. Well, I bet you guys are wondering what this stuff on the ceiling and walls is just about as much as I am. Here we are in the Wave Scattering Research Lab, and we're going to talk to Dr. Jonathan Bredo, and he's going to explain to us a little bit about what's going on. So uh, what is this room? This room is used to study interaction of electromagnetic waves with different types of objects and materials. In particular, our objective is to support work that's done uh, called remote sensing from space in which we use radar to send out a signal and by measuring the signal return to that radar in space we have, can obtain information about the environment and radar works on the principle of uh, by looking at the return signature that is the return signal as well as its frequency we can obtain information about an object and how fast it's moving and that type of thing in particular in this lab we support remote sensing from space by studying how electromagnetic waves uh, interact with particular objects and materials. And you'll see here a simulated uh, plant. And in this case, by measuring features or uh, aspects of the signature of the return signal from this plant, we can then use that to better interpret the information that's obtained from the spacecraft. For example, from space, we'd like to know what are the crop conditions in different parts of the globe, are, the, are there drought conditions? Are there insect infestations? And that sort of thing. Also, remote sensing from space can be used for uh, monitoring sea ice, its thickness, as well as how old the ice is, wind conditions over the ocean, and uh, microwaves, which is the type of electromagnetic waves we use in this case, uh, can penetrate through clouds, unlike uh, optical signals. And so that's why microwaves is sometimes more applicable to certain types of the globe that are frequently cloud covered. In this lab, if you look around, you'll see the uh, pointed foam pieces. This is a material that absorbs electromagnetic energy. And the purpose of that is so that when we're trying to study the behavior or interaction of particular objects or obstacles with that electromagnetic wave, that scattering and reflection from the walls of the chamber don't interfere with that measurement. Well, that's really interesting. Dr. Bredow, thank you so much. And here we are in the Formula SAE race car shop, and we're going to be talking with Dr. Bob Woods from the Mechanical Engineering Department. Dr. Woods, can you tell us a little bit about what you do here? Well, yes, this is an engineering competition uh, that's held in Detroit every year and numerous places elsewhere across the United States and across the world. It's a challenge for students to design and build a formula-style race car and entered in the competition. It's a three-day competition being judged on a variety of things including engineering, presentation, as well as performance of the car. And we have one year to design and build a brand new car and we have uh, students from all over campus, but mainly mechanical engineers, uh, from freshman to graduate students working on the car. And they get a really good uh, hands-on experience that helps them professionally in their careers. So uh, what, what are the requirements for one of them to drive the car? Well, it's an all-volunteer group, and uh, we have jobs for everybody, including uh, sweeping the floor, building the car, designing the car, drawing, keeping the cars running, and driving. And, of course, the driving is sort of reserved to those that have the most talent. But we do need five drivers in the competition, five different drivers in the competition. So we have our own driving school and driver training here on campus. And whoever shows the most potential as a driver is to drive. All right, and when can the students start working here? 
Actually, we'd prefer you come in the summer because we have a lot of activities in the summer. That's when we conceive the car and start its fabrication. And we build it in <clears throat> fall and early spring, and then we go to the competition in May. Wow. Well, Dr. Woods, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We're looking at a wind tunnel, and right now we're in an engineering lab in the engineering lab building, and we're talking with Dr. Subaru today, and he's going to tell us a little bit about autonomous vehicles. So, uh, what do we have to? Yeah. Uh, what you what you see here is basically a fixed wing uh, autonomous air vehicle. Uh, we use this in our laboratory here to uh, test uh, new control technologies that would fly in this particular aircraft, or rather fly this aircraft, without having a pilot to intervene. So, does that answer the question of what is an autonomous vehicle? I think so. So now, how does this relate to the wind tunnels we just seen? So, uh, it is an air vehicle, so its performance depends upon how it flies in the air. So, we have to study the effects of air over the platform or the vehicle in this case. So what we do is we build scaled, subscaled models of these airplanes and we instrument them with pressure sensors and a bunch of force measuring devices and we put them into the wind tunnel and run a whole bunch of air over it and measure the forces. And that tells us how or what are the effects of the aerodynamics of the air over the air vehicle in this case. Now do these actually fly in the wind tunnel? Uh, no, they don't fly in the wind tunnel. If you if you if you think of what happens is uh, when you are flying in the air, you are flying against still air, let us say. So you can duplicate a similar scenario in the wind tunnel by having the vehicle at rest, but having the air flow over it at a desired speed. So you simulate the same effect inside the wind tunnel. Now, what you what you're seeing here is uh, is a, a platform that we use for a competition that we go to, which is uh, hosted by the Autonomous Vehicle Systems International, and uh, this is essentially a computer with wings. And the box that you see here, if we can zoom into this box here, this box here is the brain that control controls the entire airplane. It figures out. Once you enter in some uh, waypoints as to the locations where you want to go and traverse through, so the controller here figures out exactly how you need to navigate through, what speed you should set it at, what are the deflections of the rudder, the aileron, the elevator, whatever is needed. It performs the entire mission for you right from takeoff all the way until you land back automatically. So this is all built by students. Yes, so this entire thing was built by students here and this will be the fourth year in a row that we will take this airplane for competition. And the first two years we entered into the competition, we stood first and third. Last year we had some problem with the controller box just before, maybe I think a week or so before the competition and we didn't really participate uh, actively. Uh, but this year we have it ready again to go out there. They have done, the students have done a significant improvement to the design. The entire thing is packaged so compactly, we have no issues with this one. It really flies great. Do you have to be an aerospace engineering student to work on this project? Not really. Like I said, it is a computer with wings, so we need expertise from computer scientists who design the controls and build the software and write the code for this particular block and we require uh, electrical engineers to figure out what the electromagnetic interference effects could be so you could eliminate all those effects uh, because there are so many wires going in and so many active components and then you also need the aerospace and mechanical engineers to figure out how is this thing going to fly. This is really cool. Well, Dr. Subaral, thank you so much for your time. Well, you guys have seen some of the projects here at UTA, and I hope that you enjoyed them all. Thanks for coming along on our tour, and if you have any questions, now would be the time to ask. Have a good one.